Okay, pre-production, how to do it right. Okay, You are making a short, a feature, or a documentary. So, how do you do it? I can help you. With pre-production, pre-production is the most important stage of the entire process. Okay, This is the planning, this is the preparation, this is the pre-production. But most filmmakers, especially indie filmmakers, completely neglect it every single time. It drives me crazy. I cannot tell you how many film sets I've been on where they do not have a shot list. Okay, so let's talk about. And this is probably with this episode probably should have been done way longer. <laughs> if you don't know this stuff, you're probably not watching me anyways. So <laughs> hopefully you can talk to somebody, especially if you get on the thing and say, hey, you need to watch this guy because he can really help you. If, especially if you don't know the basis of pre-production. But the pre-production stages are: you have your script. You have your treatment or your logline, your pitch, okay? So we'll call it your pitch. You have your pitch, okay? Your pitch has all those things in it that I just mentioned. Then you have your script. Then you have your shot list. Then you have your storyboard. Then you have your location and your set design. Then you have your budget and your entire listing. Then you have your mar marketing strategy, everything, okay? That is how it goes, where you build up to, to eventually a schedule. When you build up to what are you going to do, how are you going to do it, why are you going to do it? That is what pre-production is, okay? So pre-production for short films, okay? We're gonna have two different kinds of short films. You're going to have short films that you just want to do or that you're hoping will win awards or that you're, you're, you just believe in, okay? So these are just your regular short films. Then you have your competition short films, okay? Competition short films, these are, well, let's back step, okay? Your regular short film. Let's say you have a really, really good idea or you have something that you want to experiment with, you want to try it out, okay? There was a film that we had called Mostly, which it was my first ever noir style shoot. I wanted to practice lighting, so it was the perfect place to hone my skills. Short films are the perfect place to hone your skills and to test something and see if it works. That is the entire process of filmmaking. But you are trying to make something that will win awards or capture attention or maybe you know get you get you somewhere in the industry. That's what your lottery ticket is hoping. But at the very minimum, you are practicing what you love and you are working with what you what, what you have, right? So with a short film, okay, you're going to have your script, okay? Then you'll have your setup. Right, but you get your script done, and your script is about. If you don't know this already, you really should. But one page is about a minute to two minutes. Sometimes I say two to three minutes of film time. Okay, is one page. Now with a short film, anything that's over ten pages can get pretty difficult to engage an audience in. You probably want five to seven minutes long. Okay, that's probably where you want your short film to be. Now this is just for it to get seen. When it's on a competition level, that might change a little bit. But when you're just trying to get things out there and you're just trying to just trying to show you know, your short film, maybe enter into festivals, but you're trying to practice, you probably want about five to seven minutes. Maybe if you can get three to five minutes, that'd be a good time frame as far as you know, what, you want to, what you want to aim for. Now, with your short film, you should be aiming to tell an entire story. So when you get this script done, right, you have your pitch, you pitch it to people, you see what they think, yeah, yeah, I really like this, this sounds really cool. You get the script, what do you think? Your goal is, did it make sense? Did it flow? Did it keep you engaged? Is it, is it feel like it's a full thing, right? You're telling a story, you want that story to sit with somebody. Especially if you're doing a short film, and you're wanting to do like a horror thing that's going to hopefully go to a feature one day. You want to expose that this short film has so much story in it and they're so intrigued by it that they want the feature, right? Now, what is a good example of this? There's a really good example of this, okay? So there is a filmmaker. Oh my god, I just forgot his name. Why did I just forget his name? It's one of those. I know I'm not going to get it back by the time of this video. So Adam Green, it's one of the guys he did this um, thing called um, Tread. It was a documentary about a tank situation it was a whole whole thing but he did this one film called grace now the short film was about a woman whose baby died okay the baby dies and she's in the room you know with this kid and the whole family's kind of talking about oh man you know this is terrible this is terrible you know well, well, we got to go and get her when they go in to get her somehow the baby is now crying and is alive short sweet to the point that short film got the feature made 
that short film was so intriguing because everybody knew the baby was dead and then all of a sudden the baby's not and it leaves you on such a, a cliffhanger that you're like, man, you know, I want to see where this goes, I want to see what this is. And that's what got the film made with Lights Out. You had this one short film where this guy is clicking the light as he's walking out of the, or as a woman. She was clicking the, the light for the light switch at night in her apartment as she was walking out and as she clicked it, there was a shadow down the hallway. And then when she clicked it again, the shadow's gone. Click, 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 click. Every time it hit darkness, the shadow's there. Every time it hit light, there's nothing there. She eventually goes into the bedroom, and then this creature ends up exposing itself and clicking the light off. Well, it made, it was able to be one of those lottery ticket winners to get, you know, feature made, and that was lights out the feature. These are lottery ticket winners, okay? This is probably not what's going to happen to you. You are probably wanting to make a film. If you're going this route, you're putting a lot on something that really isn't more than likely to happen. Plus, everybody and their mother's doing that, so it's not the best thing to do. So what I would say is, just as a, as a, as a career advice, is I would say, do shorts that help hone your skills and make you better, and make that be the goal. If it ends up going somewhere, if it ends up doing something, that's awesome, that's even better. But at least make your main goal, I want to experiment with this type of film. I want to experiment with this type of framing and this angling. And I want to do a conversation scene, but I want to flip and break the 180 rule almost every, every turn that it makes and make it make sense. That is what I think you should be going for. Now, when you go into competition, okay, this is where your pre-production needs to work primarily on schedule, okay? Schedule and a little thing called backups, okay? With the first one, you kind of had free reign. You're just kind of doing your thing. You were doing you. With this other one, you are bringing in other actors, actresses, other people to help you compete with other filmmakers with a goal in mind. Now, this means your pre-production stage includes everything that the first one did, but it also includes research on the festivals that you're going into and why you're going into those festivals, research on the locations that you're going to be going to and why those locations are going to work, and then what backups do you have for those locations on that day. Plus, your schedule needs to be tight and to the point. Do not have 12 hour days if you don't need 12 hour days. Practice. This is where you can take your pre-production phase and you say, we are going to shoot this short film, right? We're going to shoot for, you know, some film festival that we really like that they added in this element where they said you need to have a vacuum cleaner and somebody gets killed by it. Okay, how do we make this make sense? Well, let's practice. Let's shoot two, like two minute ones and try to get them done within six hours, right? So the first one we say, is six hours. The second one that we try to shoot is going to be four hours. And then the third one that we're going to try to shoot, we're going to try to get it done in three hours, right? This is all practice to hone your skills and hone your team and get your team ready for competition. That is what you are going for. So if you were to jump into a 48 hour film festival and you were in a lo on a location, and let's say that maybe you didn't have a backup location, or you've been shooting and then somebody walks in the door and says, hey, you guys got to get the hell out of here, you know? You only have an hour. You and your team have prepared yourselves to do that. You and your team know what you're doing. So your pre-production for competition changes. You now are competing. Imagine going up to do like, you know, the Iron Man competition or whatever and going, wait, 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 I need to set everything up, you know. Well, this is how the pros do it. This is how they do it. So I want to get my, you know, hands gripped and, and make sure I got all the powder and I got all my, my food, you know, I need it. What are you doing, you know? You need to be moving. So add this to your pre-production stage of how am I going to prove that we can pull this off? How am I going to make sure that in this competition phase, not only is this film going to work and going to get completed, but it's going to get completed to exactly what I'm aiming it for. And then get your entire team in on that. So now you move into features, okay? Pre-production for a feature is usually a long haul. It's a long game, right? It takes a long time to get a feature made. It takes probably a short film to get a, t a, a, a feature film made. And the reason is, is you can use it as a proof of concept to try to get an investor enticed by it. All those things I talked about are what you have to do to get that thing working. But your main goal is you want to be productive. Just because you're not a producer doesn't mean you don't want to produce a product. Don't think that I'm a director, so all I need to worry about is the story. No, 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 buddy. You need to worry about everything. You need to understand the entire game and then move forward with it and make your day. If you are a director, there are three words you need. Make your day. What does that mean? 
that means that if you say it's going to be a four hour shoot, it's going to be a four hour shoot. No matter if the whole set goes up in flames, you're going to figure out how to make it a four, four hour shoot. That's what you do. You're a professional. You're trying to be a, a professional. So act like it. Fake it till you make it. But understand how to do these things. The only way to understand how to do these things is to do your homework and set up to where you know this film inside and out. So with your pre-production for a feature, you need to really delve into market research. You need to delve into a full pitch deck. You need to know where you're going to put this movie, why you're going to put it there, what other avenues can you use. Can you go for a theatrical release? Can you go for a theatrical release with investor money? And then what would it look if you just had, you know, two grand in your pocket that you got from working at Amazon for, you know, three months? What can you make and how, what avenues can you push this film to? And why are they going to work? So your pre-production goes into everything you should have by the time that you're shooting you should have all that lookbook and the pitch and the treatment and all that kind of thing completed long completed right then you should have your script all the revisions everything is done everything is set up and you have your official shooting script you have your shot list you have your lighting design exactly how you're going to do it what you're going to place your lights and why all of these things need to be figured out and the reason why I say this is because it will make you move so much faster and better Okay, we had a trick that we use with our movies all right this is one of the reasons why we were able to make cut so fast and why we were able to fix the problems we made on the set of Bob when we moved into our second feature and this was we had a cool trick where the, the AD would wear a hat okay and the hat would face forwards when we were on time and the hat would face backwards when we were not on time so that that way I could look up well the director could look up because I was in my own thing but the director could look up and see directly okay we're behind on time we don't have time for a second take we don't have time for whatever's going on we don't have time for you know whatever extra little thing we want to do or hey makeup needs to hurry up this needs to hurry up whatever whatever needs to happen at this point now it's happening but the director could instantly see without having to ask anybody where we were at in the production this is a preparation this is something that we had designed with everything that we knew everybody and anybody who wanted to see our project and how we were going to do it could see every single element from the lighting to the sound to the colors to the you know to the the shooting the actual camera work of it everything the character design all of it was completely ready you get these things done so that you as the creator of this project you already know all these answers if you don't know the answer to whether or not your character likes skittles or likes twizzlers right sorry no twizzlers or red vines right if you don't know the answer to that question you obviously don't know your story you don't know your character you should know what that is but that's not the name of the game the name of the game is collaboration so you need to put in all that work and put in all that time so that anybody else jumping into it can also see oh yeah this character is going to choose red vines now they know so it takes more time it takes more effort it takes more energy but it's well worth it you will move so much better and faster and you will not have to explain everything over and over again of well this is why i'm shooting it like this this is why we only have a three light setup or this is why this thing seems so bright you're not taking any time to do that you've set everybody up for success so with pre-production on a feature know your feature inside and out and allow, and get everybody else to know your feature inside and out get everybody that's working with you able to see what this is going to be and now they can chase that dream with you as you go through now also in this pre-production okay there's another note practice okay table reads of your friend table reads are so much your friend because they give your cast a chance to really connect and ask questions and set themselves up for success so when they come on to set you can make your day because they're already prepared they know that they shouldn't f flux their voice on that one spot that they naturally were doing the first few table reads we have so much going for us now with zoom and all these other things where you don't even have to be in the same room anymore you don't have to spend a bunch of money on you know pizza to get everybody to come down to your place so that you can sit down and read this script you don't have to do any of that you just click 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 there you go now everybody's here now we read the script now we ask questions also talk to your people ask them questions ask them about their life know who they are especially if you're bringing somebody in anytime that I bring it's part of my pre-production phase okay it's part of how I do it any person I bring in 
that I am hiring or I don't know where I'm considering to hire. I get them on the phone and the first thing I do is I talk to them and ask them about their interests, what they, what they like, what they don't like, and who they are. Know who the people you are working with, who they are, and give them a chance to talk about themselves. You are bringing them into your project, to your baby. You're trying to make a film. You're trying to make something and sell something. So know exactly what kind of selling points you have because you might discover this actress is also an award-winning photographer and just doesn't like to talk about it. And so you might find out that you could get some BTS from it or that she could just assist you in the framing of your stuff and she could look over your storyboard that you have posted, that you have available to these people that they can see and maybe you might find a little bit of a nugget of, that can help you make the film. Now I'm not saying to allow these people to walk all over you, of course not. What I'm saying is bring these people in on the pre-production phase. Bring this into the world that you're setting up at that point and it will make it better for you as you go on, especially if you find out this person isn't the right person for this character. You would not know. You would end up going into production and all of a sudden they're trying to take your story and trying to turn the actor, you know, the character into blah, 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 whatever the hell they want. And now you have a problem on set that you need to handle. And now you're super stressed out. Now you have to get somebody new or whatever kind of monstrous thing is going to fall over. That is what you could have avoided if you had brought these people on and then really listen to them. Your pre-production is so important. Do all of it. No matter how small the project, no matter how little it is, no matter how much you go, eh, you know, I don't, I don't really think it needs a storyboard. Guess what? Just do it. Just do it. Because the storyboard is not for you. The storyboard is for them. The storyboard is for the other people. You're collaborating, right? You're creating together. So, that's features. That's, that's the pre-production for features. What is the pre-production for documentaries, right? Well, documentaries are a little bit different, okay? Because you're going out to capture a real story. You're going out to capture something that's actively happening, okay? You are trying to anticipate. It's either actually actively happening or it already happened. And now you're trying to anticipate and build a story around something that is, something that is uh, already moving. Like how I would explain a documentary is, is you're on a horse and you're chasing a wild horse and you're trying to rope it in and bring it back home and show it off okay so you have to go out capture the thing somehow you know lasso it and take it on back to the barn then you gotta get it cleaned up get it ready to go get it looking pretty and then you gotta somehow get it all the way out to the big show and show it off <laughs> it's a process plus it's an ever-changing process but like when I made my documentary right my documentary was the Sasha Reese evolution okay Sasha is a wild horse like any other wild horse I'd ever met. This man is extremely inspirational. He's from Serbia, he's foreign, right? And so he has a way of explaining things and they do things a little bit differently than us Americans. And uh, it's very unique and it was part of the reason why I think the documentary won an award is because of how interesting he is. But going out and capturing these moments with him and as he was telling his story, Sasha tells his story very jumbled up. He will get intrigued by other stories within his stories and so he will start on a story here and then he will go all, all over the place and then end his story over here well you kind of can't cut out all of this because of the way that he tells his story so when you would when I would in the cutting room cut out all this stuff and try to splice the story together it didn't make any sense and it was because the way he told it so we had to consistently and constantly change how we were going through this. Now, that doesn't mean that our pre-production wasn't set up, but how do we do our pre-production? Okay, our pre-production started off as a pitch, right? Everything should start off as a pitch. You have your logline. We had a logline for our documentary, what it was going to be, what it was going to be about. It's going to be about this guy who went from rags to riches in the poodle, the um, professional poodle grooming um, competition ring also to becoming a international educator on um, groom, dog grooming. So we had this story that we, we knew what it was going to be. Then we had it blocked out to where we were going to add in certain elements. Now what we were going to add in as far as elements were, we were going to add in a home-built, and this was designed, we were going to add in a home-built samurai costume because we wanted to show the honor of a character. So we wanted to add in this element of honor and dignity and respect and loyalty because that is what he stands for. And we thought, what 
image could we portray that would shine on that? Plus, what is something that could intrigue an audience member besides just the dogs? Because you're trying to make something that obviously will sell, that obviously will intrigue, that obviously will get people to show up to the theater or to buy the product. Especially with a documentary, you're trying to chase a story and find things that you can use. So when you go into a documentary and when you're trying to make one of those, you go in with what you're kind of expecting. Now, another example of this is Tiger King. Tiger King went in to go about snakes. They wanted to talk about the snake trafficking around the country and, you know, exotic snakes. That's what their whole plan was. They had an entire pitch. They got the budget. They got the funding for it. That's what the documentary was going to be about was, tra you know, transferring, transporting and purchasing snakes around the country. And then they discovered a snow leopard in the back of a van. And they decided to change that. So their entire thing adapted to something completely different. And it just continuously adapted once they met the characters like Joe Exotic. They met the characters like um, Carol Baskin. They, they met these people. And that is where the story took a big turn. So with being in a documentary setting, constantly update your pre-production. What does that mean? Okay, It means you're researching on the go. It means you're changing on the go. It means that as you go through, you can sit down and say, well, let me look at this location. So we're moving on to another location. We're moving from an outside barn to an indoor um, um, uh, apartment, okay? And it's a high-rise, really nice apartment, okay? What framing, what kind of style shots am I going to use? What kind of things am I going to go for? The night before, or even, honestly, on me, I would do it on the set. I would walk in, throw some music on, walk around, and I would write down the different shots I was going to use, the different frames I was going to explore. I would get this written down so that I could hand it to my AD and say this is what we're doing today so that, that way it wasn't just a, a shit show and it wasn't all over the place. People understood what I was going for. I would draw out these things. I would look up, hey, okay, you know the movie American Psycho? they go, oh uh, yeah, and they'd say, okay, it's going to be this scene and I would click it into YouTube and I would show them. I'd say, this is the style that we're going to do, this is what we're kind of going off of. It had nothing to do with American Psycho or any of that. It actually that was the closest reference I could get, but I put an image in their head so that they, and something that they would recognize or get excited about maybe, that would get them intrigued enough to go, okay, cool, and they got it in what they were going to do, they knew what I was kind of going for, and it made things smoother. With a documentary shoot, the smoother, the better. With documentaries, you will have long shoot days, and there's nothing that you can really do about that. I mean, it just it is what it is. But you can pre-plan, and as you move on, set up your pre-production as you're going. You should always be doing the pre-production. Even in the production, that can be argued, because other people, they don't like to work like that. They like to just kind of go balls to the wall and just kind of do their thing. Me, I work with so many people, and the problem is, I don't want to have to explain everything I'm doing. I would rather set it up, go ba ba ba, bam, there you go, this is how we're this is how we're doing this, and then we move on and then we'll do that. Or sometimes I set up something and I say, what do you think? It's now an image. It's something that they can understand just looking at it. And they say, what if you did it like this? And oh my God, that happened constantly. Where I would find a whole new, you know, um, lighting setup that I was like, man, I didn't even think of that. You can get so tunnel vision on this that you, you don't realize what you're missing. And so that's why I say it can be very important to do your pre-production on the go. So the documentary, always be open-minded, but set your stuff up like a competition short. Set it up where it's ready to go and you know what you're shooting, why you're shooting, and how you're shooting it. But then be open-minded and adapt that paper. I would write my pre-production down on just a piece of paper and constantly scratch things and go and scratch and this and that and edit it when it comes to a documentary. So, pre-production. It is your lifesaver. Do all of it. Do all of it. As much as it might be tedious and the more that you do it, the, the harder you know it is to, to keep, keep continuing to do it. But it is so important not just for you. It is for anybody involved in your story and it is literally just mapping out what's in your head so that others can see it. And like I said, Filmmaking is collaborating. That's what this whole game is. So, show them what you think. Do the pre-pro. Always.